There's no question about that. He's going to be a fine football player. Great uh, concentration there by Tyrone Jeffco. Streeter again tips the ball. And again, watch this catch by Tyrone. Laid it in there very, very nice right in the middle of their, of, of, the, of their coverage. And we thought that play was there all afternoon. And our offensive line did a good job protecting. We just lose a handle on the ball. But believe it or not, right there, and this is the kind of afternoon it was, that was a touchdown because that was a halfback option running pass again. And uh, Booker was standing right down there on the, on, right on the goal line. And here's a great interception by them. That's a fine interception by their free safety, Lawrence, and we know he's a fine football player. And, uh, you know, we felt we had to go deep with the ball. And, of course, it's easier when you're behind the way they, uh, we were for them to lay back there. But we, the last play of the game, of course, want to go downtown, see if we can get the pass interception, maybe we get the tip or what. But they certainly were playing back, and, uh, you know, we've got to give them a lot of credit. There's the final coach. I know a, a disappointing loss, but the Falcons have bounced back. Well, John, a young man was very disappointed. You know, we, but we're not discouraged. I promise you that. And, of course, the uh, thing we wanted to do was make uh, football history and be the third team to ever beat Notre Dame five years in a row. And their plans just got detoured a little bit. And it's like uh, we had a uh, bus detour we had to, had to take coming to the stadium that morning. But I told them that's where our season is right now. We just detoured a little bit. But, hey, Monday we'll be back on the right track. And, of course, all our, our goals, the Western Athletic Conference Championship, the, the commander Chiefs trophy, the possibility of a bow bid, and all these things are right out in front of us, so you can best assure that the birds will be back. All right, Coach, we'll have our regular weekly features. We'll have all that and a lot more right after this. In the, in the Falcons. Well, they add so much to, to pregame activities, halftime shows. Uh, I hope all of them return. <laughs> Sometimes that happens that they don't come back. But uh, I know it was a very enjoyable show, and uh, I think the, the Notre Dame fans really showed their appreciation for them. All right, here's Lee Douglas with a look at the Air Force Falcons. College football is loaded with many colorful mascots. There's Ralphie the Buffalo at CU and Bevo, the Texas Longhorn. But this is the only performing mascot in the country, the Air Force Falcon. The Falcon was chosen as mascot by the first graduating class of the Academy because it possessed characteristics that best typify the Air Force, and that includes speed and beautiful flight. The Falcons are kept in muse at the Academy. There are about eight different species, but the majority are prairie falcons native to Colorado and trained by cadets in their spare time. Cadets uh, will start with the new baby birds. Every, every football season we have new baby birds. They'll start them uh, when the birds are eight weeks of age. Most of the birds are trained specifically to perform at halftime of football games, and that requires hundreds of hours of practice. The cadet and the falcon alone at Falcon Stadium their common bond, a small lure. So at the half times, those birds are trying to get to that lure, which has right now quail meat, either chicken or quail meat on that, that that's their food reward. They're trying to get that lure, and it's just a matter of conditioning, behavioral response, to get them to respond to the lure. The cadets will play like a cat and mouse game, trying to keep the bird from getting the lure, but still not having them become so frustrated that they'll fly away. I've learned a lot. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of patience when I first started working with the birds, and they've taught me a lot. Proud, you know, they're wild birds, and uh, they're just inter interesting to work with, you know, train. fun to watch. Oh, they really are. And of course, uh, we're very proud to be Falcons, because I'll tell you one thing, they'll attack anything, and they'll attack things a lot bigger than themselves, and of course, we think that's very typical of our football team, too, John. All right, Coach, we're going to meet one of your assistants this week up close and personal. Here's a look at Tom Miller, defensive line coach. If you're going to play defensive line for the Air Force Academy, one thing is for sure, you're going to be playing against somebody a lot bigger than you almost every week. The man that coaches the defensive line is assistant Tom Miller, now in his third season with Fisher to Barry. We kind of prefer taking a, a guy that's a, a good sized linebacker, uh, an athlete, uh, or someone who's played another position and is a good athlete, has good quickness, has good uh, uh, foot movement, and uh, putting him down on the defensive line 
and uh, you know that way. We, and then, and then at that point, you know, making them bigger as, as, as much as we can make them uh, bigger and stronger in the weight room. Coach Miller is one of the few assistants on the staff that is not from the Southeast. He grew up in upstate New York, but he did coach in the Southeast at both the Citadel and Davidson. You know, some people out here knew who I was and, and uh, you know, had an opportunity to come and, and uh, just, uh, just grateful, uh, you know, not only uh, is, is most of the guys here from the South, but, you know, I go home and my wife is from South Carolina, so I'm really outnumbered. Tom, along with wife Pat, son Michael, and daughter Emily, have found a home at the academy and hope to stay for quite a while. Had the misfortune of uh, moving two or three years in a row, well, three years in a row to be exact, uh, and we're, we've got moving out of our system right now. We don't, we don't really want to do that, and uh, so we're, I've got another child coming uh, sometime in the next month, and uh, we'd, we'd kind of like to stay right where we are for a while. And like all of the AFA assistant coaches, Tom Miller believes in the academy and head coach Fisher DeBerry. He just always thinks about you and he's always thinking about your family. And, you know, my wife got a letter from, from him just the other day and uh, expressing his gratitude towards uh, her patience, you know, uh, with, uh, with the season and, uh, you know, the, the hours and all that. And, uh, you know, this morning he mentioned uh, that uh, again, you know, that he felt like we were doing a, a fantastic job. And it just makes you feel good every once in a while for somebody to tell you you're doing a good job. And uh, he takes every opportunity, I think, that he can, uh, you know, to do that. And, and it, uh, it makes you feel good because it, it makes you feel like, uh, you know, hey, this is all worthwhile. I know Tom played his football in my hometown, upstate New York, Cortland, New York. Cortland, New York. <laughs> <laughs> you too knew you wanted to know very well. But boy, boy, what a great job Tom has done. And I really think probably our defensive front has probably been the most consistent performing group of young people in our program. Hope Tom will stay here long enough to his son Michael has an opportunity to come to the academy because he's a fine little athlete, I guarantee you. They're a beautiful family, and we're so proud to have them in our family. And, of course, they've got an addition coming up, and it just so happens it's planned for the BYU ball game. <laughs> so hopefully we're going to be able to celebrate two things that night. All right, Fisher, and speaking of the defensive line, our player profile this week by Lee Douglas takes a look at Steve Spiewak. It seems almost every week on Falcon Focus, we feature a player who has at one time changed positions. And I guess that versatility is what helps make Air Force a great football team. Number 63 could certainly tell us a few stories about a few different positions. When Steve Spiewak came to the academy, he was a linebacker. Last year, he started at nose guard, where he became an integral part of that Falcon pass rush, including six solo tackles for over 40 yards and losses. But in the spring, time for another change to defensive tackle to help beef up that D-line, which also consists of Hennings and Steed. I think it's a, a better adaptation for myself. You know, it's more along the lines of my abilities. I think in nose guard, I was a little too long-legged for that quick shorty stuff. And uh, outside on the tackle, you know, I'm one-on-one. -on -one. I got a better pass rush, you know, opportunity. And it uh, gives me a little more time to read. And uh, I like the outside, you know, rush better. It reminds me of, you know, linebacker days. And Steve, who's wearing number 65 here in practice, is still a major cog in that fierce pass rush. He's a 6'3", 240-pound senior from Highland, Michigan, and that's nothing new. That's small for a Division I college football tackle, but he tells me the days are long gone when opponents used to taunt him about his size. That happened, I'd say, uh, one or two games when I was a sophomore. First time I went out there, and, and I just kind of, you know, saw those BYU linemen and looked straight <laughs> up. And, and after getting into the backfield a couple times, you say, hey, these guys aren't really that, you know, what they're built up to be. And Steve has certainly spent a good part of his time in the opponent's backfield. He says he considered a few Ivy League schools when he graduated from high school, but he came to the academy to be near the mountains and, of course, to play Division I football, and he's loved every minute of it. Every game's a memory. Every game has been fun. There's um, all kinds of friendships, you know, that you uh, grow with a lot of different people, and not only, the, you know, through football, but up at the academy and the people downtown, you know. You, you just, it's just a learning experience, and you just stem from that. Has it sunk in yet that it's getting pretty close to over? Uh, it sunk in last summer. And uh, I put a lot into the summer, you know, I put in a lot of time, you know, knowing that this would be it. Ah, but it's not quite over yet. Still four games and a possible bowl game to go. And who knows how many sacks for number 63. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas.
Steve's played real well this year. You better believe it. Now, I don't know if a guy's worked any harder in our program, John, and I'm just so proud of him. Uh, he went through the decision process to stay at the academy like a lot of guys, but, uh, boy, once he made that decision to stay, he made his mind up that he was going to be an outstanding Division I football player. I just wish you could follow him play-by-play play in the Navy ball game because he really dominated and intimidated that Navy uh, offensive front. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough about the outstanding job and the competitor that he is. Okay, we'll come back and wrap it up and take a look at the San Diego State Aztecs. We'll have that right after this. Take a look at some scores from Saturday. And up in Fort Collins, CSU, a big win over Hawaii. San Diego State, a winner over UTEP. We'll talk more about the Aztecs in a second. Hey, BYU knocks off Wyoming. That's a good win for you. Well, that's a great win for BYU. And, of course, the opening date apparently helped them, but they beat Wyoming right in their own backyard. All right, and New Mexico defeats Utah. So let's take a look at that Western Athletic Conference in the standings now. Sandy